In October of 2011, four college students disappeared in the woods near Porter Township, Pennsylvania, while researching a documentary on children's author Jacob Stanley. They remain missing to this day. Last month, their recordings appeared online. In an effort to aid in the investigation, the families of those missing have agreed to release the following sound files. If anyone has information on those missing or the identity of the person or persons who uploaded these files, please use the contact information provided. Anything submitted may be used in future episodes. Certain materials referenced in this podcast, including the published works of Jacob Stanley, are currently protected under U.S. copyright law and may be redacted. For legal reasons, some names have been withheld and voices altered. The views and opinions expressed in this podcast are solely those of the podcasters and participants and do not represent the official policy or position of the Iphigenia County Police Department of Porter Township, Pennsylvania, or its associates. This podcast contains adult themes and language. Listener discretion is advised. File labeled 002, rough cut. Episode 2, Tell Me a Story, The True Life of Jacob Stanley. And I am the only living relative of the world-renowned author, Jacob Stanley. You want me to take that again? No, that was great, Jane. (sighs) So, shall we begin? TV, New York. If your child has been to a school book fair recently, chances are they came home with one of this author's scary books. Our guest tonight's first anthology leapt to the top of the New York Times bestsellers list. Over the past few years, he has become a household Bridging name. The gap between Alvin Schwartz and Stephen the King. The devil is among us, friends. He's among us in the form of a writer. It may have struggled during its initial release in 1977, but now tell me a story. Under the bed that's over my head, a skyrocket. How many parent organizations complained that his work was too sophisticated for children? Traded your homes and your children's minds. Cobb Anthology, Tell Me a Story, Moonless Sky, and Other Friends. Sold out from bookstores in mere minutes. Becoming Stanley's a books film. ranked on the American Library Association's 100 Most Frequently Challenged Books from 1981. Stanley's to books 19- promote disobedience, violence, and the occult. Lord have mercy. His Tell Me a Story collection. The Floor That Creaks, The Closet That Speaks, and The Tiptoes That You Walk On was released in 1986. Check their bookshelves. Check their backpacks. I do think his final book, released in 99, TMAS, The Nightmare, The Dream, The Places Between, was by far his best work. has been described as subversive and dark. I simply describe it as genius. It is my pleasure to introduce... Please welcome... Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome... Jacob Stanley. Mr. Jacob Stanley! Jacob Stanley. Little to nothing is known about the life of this elusive author. And since 1999, Jacob Stanley seems to have completely dropped off the face of the earth. Until a short, two-line obituary appeared in a small-town paper over a year ago. From Boo Labs and Red Cup Media, I'm Tolan Reed. And I'm Avery Fisher. This is Tell Me a Story, the true life of Jacob Stanley. Check, 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 check. Jane Stanley interview intro, take one. Jane Stanley has shoulder length red hair and round red glasses that nestle deep into her cheeks. She's in her 30s, but comes off a little old-fashioned. Kinda has an Aunt Linda circa 1987 vibe about her. You'll get what I mean. Avery. You don't think that's accurate? Well, it sounds kind of mean. Okay, fine. But I'm going to leave it for now. Here's you. 
<clears throat> Jane Stanley was gracious enough to speak with us for several hours. Seriously? Sorry. <clears throat> My bad. Jane Stanley was gracious enough to speak with us for several hours. She even allowed us to leave with a number of boxes filled with journals and an assortment of recordings. Everything from reel to reels to super eights and the equipment to play them on. Uh, production note. Tolan, the sound is um, really weird. Uh, all the equipment was working fine when we were there, but when we offloaded it... I have a theory. Yeah, RJ has a theory. You can dismiss it all you want to, but I'm telling you right now, that's EVP. Or it could be that we need to change out the cable, possibly use a different mic for interviews. Whatever. So we kind of just toss the interview together with the cleanest segment sound-wise, but there's a bunch more material. It's just not very usable. And I'm digging your music polls, BT dubs. Agreed. My mom's name was Marie. She was Uncle Russie's... I call Uncle Jacob Uncle Russie's because his first name was Russell and his middle name was Jacob. So, Uncle Russie's... Hmm? Can we try to use Jacob instead of Russell just so we don't confuse people? Yes, sir, director man, sir. Oh, I didn't. Anyways, so mom was Uncle Russie's, sorry, Uncle Jacob's younger sister. She's been passed, oh, I guess five years now. Oh, I'm so sorry, Jane. Still miss her every day. But well, where was I? Ah, so mom was born in 1958 in this very house right over there. And about 13 years later, Grandma Stanley died in this very house, right over there. That must have been very hard for your mother and Jacob, their mom dying so young. Well, yes. Uncle Jacob had to finish raising my mom himself. He was only 20 at the time. But he got married right around then, so his wife stepped in and took care of mom. Yeah, Jacob was married? It was only for a few years. They weren't exactly a good pairing. When my mom left home, she took off after that. Why weren't they a good pairing? Huh? Oh, they were so, so young, who can say? I don't even think I know her name. Yeah, no, sorry. Where was their dad? Pop Pop was not in the picture, as far as I know. He left when Uncle Jacob was six. You mean eight, right? Sorry, I, I just did the math. Oh my, did you guys catch that on the mic? My tummy is making the worst sounds. I must be nervous. Charlie, did you hear that tummy sound? Oh, uh, uh, no, you're good. The mic didn't pick up anything. Don't worry, Jane, you're doing a really great job. So Am I? I hope so. I really want to help you inside as much as I can. <sighs> well, so Mom's off roaming the world. When in 81, she finds herself in the family way. So she comes back home and Uncle Rest Uncle Jacob takes her in. Then, ta-da, I'm born right over there. I'm kidding. I was born in the hospital. <laughs> he was doing very well for himself by then, so tried to make sure Mom had the best of everything. He had already purchased some of the nearby land and was going to build Mom and I our own place. But my mom, well, Mom, had, she battled addiction. So sorry, Jane. Oh, I'm sorry. No, it's okay. I mean, it's not okay, but it is okay. Uncle Rocky, hmm, Uncle Jacob, got Mom into a facility, and he took care of me while she was gone. Mom was in and out of rehab until I was eight or so. But then, like a bolt of lightning, she just stopped, completely cleaned up her act, which was perfect timing because Uncle Jacob had been living full-time in the camper van. To write, you know. Wait, the camper van? There was an actual camper van? He references it so many times in his work, but I never was sure. So if he... you were living alone in the house at eight years old? Sorry. More or less. It did make me very self-sufficient. Um, 
What year was this? 88, 89, somewhere in there. That's when he completely stopped coming to the house. Then, in 92, Mom got a new job a bit of ways, and it didn't feel right for us to be here anymore, so we left. I didn't see Uncle Jacob again after that. We wrote each other from time to time, but... Well, I guess the wind had to share its opinion. Excuse me for just a sec. Sufficient. Don't do that. Oh, it's so cold over there. Some coffee? Warm you up? Uh, sure. Thank you. I'll help. Jesus Christ. We're gonna need her to review this. I don't want to use anything about her child that she isn't comfortable with. Yeah, yeah, totally. And she is all over the place. Let's try to keep her focus. 10 4. Watch out! Haha, <laughs> it's me. Uh, this is one of the segments I was talking about earlier. It starts out fine, but, um, it goes kind of weird. Um, but RJ made me keep it in. You can dismiss it all you want. Ooh. I don't know. <laughs> well, told you a little about the house. The land around it was evidently a steel on account of its proximity to the Mendenhall Institute. Some claim the woods between here and there are haunted. Oh, wait, the Mendenhall. Yeah, I've heard about that place. Oh, yes. They say that in the 1960s, a woman escaped the Mendenhall and hanged herself right in one of those trees on the edge of the old property line. Right over there. The story goes that she broke out of the Institute late one night. Sorry. Yes? Uh, can we come back and refocus back on Jacob? He didn't do many interviews, and when he did, he never talked about his life at all. <sighs> he was a very private person. Kept to himself. You know. But my mom told me a little. Like? Like... Uh, Uncle Rest, Uncle Jacob, he's really sick of the time. Had the scarlet fever. Grandma raised them mostly on her own. She even homeschooled them herself. <laughs> yep, he's one hell of a lady. Full time mom, full time homeschool teacher, full time cocktail waitress. Cocktail waitress? I know. This doesn't seem like the kind of town a cocktail waitress could pull enough tips to raise two kids on. And it isn't. No, that poor thing had to work one town over. He used to be a train station, by the way. He did a lot of business. He was gone from four to four every night. Sometimes for days at a time. That's quite a lot of time for young kids to be on their own. Some might think that. Yes, but I know I thrived and really became my own person, having a lot of time to myself at an early age. Made you self-sufficient? Oh, heavens, yes. But I... With me. So, Jacob was a bit of a troublemaker? Boys, no, 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 boys, no. uh, They don't really say that anymore. No, it's a good thing. Drink, 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 smoke. Loved a good campfire. I don't want to make him feel like some sort of rough enough. He was very kind, even as a little boy. When my mom was like six years old, someone hit a deer with their car and just left it on the side of the road out there. My mom saw it and started crying. 
So my uncle goes and checks on the poor thing and discovers this little baby fawn cowering next to her. He plucked that baby up and the two of them hand fed it until it could be fun again. There was a deep kindness to him. You know what that reminds me of? His story, The Wolf Who Fed the Fawn. Right, 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 from the second book. Oh, shit. When? I know that one. Um, my older brother, he loved this show from the 90s. Uh, long ago and far away? I remember that show. It was hosted by James Earl Jones. Well, he taped most of the episodes, and when I was little, we would watch them together, and they did that story once. Oh, Charlie, do you still have them? I'd love to see that. So would I. I converted them from VHS, so they're on my computer. I can make you a copy. I think I know what we're doing tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, from the PBS television show Long Ago and Far Away, the incomparable James Earl Jones reading The Wolf Who Fed the Fawn by Jacob Stanley. Courtesy of Child Young. Unauthorized material redacted. He was a bit heartbroken after the final book came out. I think he really thought it would be as well received as his other work, and it just wasn't. In 1999, everything was Harry Potter, and his book was not Harry Potter. And with everything he did to make sure it got released. How do you mean? Well, from what I know, he told his publishers as long as they guaranteed to release that last book, he would sign over the rights to all of it. When you say all of it. I mean all of it. They own the copyright and publishing rights to every book he ever wrote in perpetuity. Holy shit. But my... Maybe I'll be able to get the copyright back and then get another publishing company to put his work back into print or online. That would be amazing. I would love that. But to give up the copyrights, why would he ever agree to that? Trust me, I know. It boggles the mind. Had they ever turned down one of his manuscripts before? I don't know. Maybe... He was writing constantly when I lived here, so to not have a book come out until 99 seems weird, but who knows? When was this? When was what? When he was writing constantly? You said he had moved out to the camper? It was right after his third book came out, so like probably 1988, 89. Did he ever say what he was working on? No, just that he was writing. I could tell he was really into it, though. Even had an assistant for a while. Really? Do you know who this assistant was? That would be a great interview. Oh, I never met him. They mostly stayed in the camper. Was it an assistant or an illustrator? Oh, don't know. Why? His first few books were all illustrated by different artists. Each individual drawing was by a different person and they were never credited. Except for his last book. That book was done by one illustrator, L.L. Randolph. Does that name ring any bells? No, sorry. As I said, they stayed in the camper. This must have been one big camper. Charlie, you warm enough over there? Your little hands look frozen. Oh, I'm I'm fine. You mentioned that after you left Pennsylvania, you never saw him again, but you wrote to each other over the years. Did you hear about his publisher issues from a letter he sent, or...? Oh, no. His lawyer read me... Mommy, I want to say, called my mom, tried to get her to talk some sense into him when he wanted to sign over the rights. But mom knew it was pointless. But yeah, I practically wrote Uncle Jacob once a week. He only responded a handful of times, so I could tell when he was really rattled by something, because he would actually take the time to write me. I kept them, you know, all his letters. Jane. Bread, eggs, milk, oatmeal, horseradish, maraschino cherries. I write you on this day, November 2nd, in the year of our Lord, 2001, with a simple list. Bread, eggs, milk, oatmeal, horseradish, maraschino cherries. A simple list that, if written by me a mere 20 years ago, 
Bread, eggs, milk, oatmeal, horseradish, maraschino cherries. Could have been published in a book. Bread, eggs, milk, oatmeal, horseradish, maraschino cherries. And sold millions. Bread, eggs, milk, oatmeal, horseradish, maraschino cherries. But now, bread, eggs, milk, oatmeal, horseradish, maraschino cherries is just a list. Bread, eggs, milk, oatmeal, horseradish, maraschino cherries. Sincerely, Russell. P.S. Bread, eggs, milk, oatmeal, horseradish, maraschino cherries. sure you guys don't want something else to eat? I can whip up something quick. Oh, that's so sweet, but it's really okay. What about a snack for the road? We still have a bunch of those sandwiches from earlier. You could have spoiled us rotten today. Thank you again, Jane. This was... I don't even know how to describe it. Yes, thank you. Oh, my, no, it was my pleasure. I just wish we had more time. I'm sure there are more things I could pull from the old memory banks about Uncle Russ... <laughs> Uncle Jacob. <laughs> <laughs> we will be out of here shortly. Did you guys grab the boxes from the basement? All taken care of. Did you get what you needed from the living room? I think so. Did you check the attic? Attic? Uh, we might need to pass up on that so we can get on the road. I'm sure we have everything we need. Right. Yeah, I'm sure. This was just supposed to be a, a day trip, and we have to be getting back. Well, that's too bad. I plan on getting rid of that old camper van soon, and I would hate for you to miss giving it the once-over. You still have the camper van? Of course. Seriously? Whoa. It's right where he left it. Had the junk guy coming to get it in a few days, so... As I said, it's a shame you can't spare a little more time. Hell, if it still runs, you could take it with you. Seriously? Whoa. Shit. Well, I mean... We could maybe... No, maybe. We would have to talk about it first. We didn't plan on spending the night. No, we did not. I'm okay with it. Ugh. But we don't even have a place to stay, and it's so late. Yes, it is so late. Too late to start a five-hour drive, and don't worry about a place to stay. We couldn't stay here. Oh, no, of course not. There's barely enough room for me to sleep here. But... The homestead always has room... And Debbie over there owes me a favor, so what do you say? Well, I mean, we could maybe. The homestead? No. It's a big old converted farmhouse. Has a family style restaurant on the main floor, which has the best food in the world. And then, like a B&B on top, 200 years old, really charming and rustic. Oh, no. We still need to talk about it, figure out the logistics, if, if it's even possible. Sure, sure, sure. Go ahead. Do that. And I'll just give Deb a ring, let her know that you might be coming by. And tomorrow, if you decide to stay, we can head out from here around 9 in the a.m. Or if we have to, we could just go and check out the camper van now. What? Go out into those woods after dark? Ha <laughs> ha, no, thank you, ma'am. Uh, why? I imagine there are a lot of bears or other wild animals. Oh no, that shit is haunted. I'll be in the car. Jane, lovely to meet you. Guys, Oh, wait, wait, wait. Hold on a second, Charlie. It's Chuck. Oh, yes, yes, Chuck. Sorry, you just look like a Charlie. I wanted to make sure I gave you this before you headed out. I noticed how you really took to my coffee. So I put together a little thermos for that long drive home. Um, thank you. And your hands look so cold today, so I grabbed a pair of Uncle's driving gloves. I could have these. Sure can. Go ahead, see if they fit. They fit great. Um, thanks, Jane. No problem. Chuck, I'm glad you like them. They sure seem to like you back. <laughs> I'll get this stuff out of the car. Where is the home?
Mom said. Oh, let me make you a map here. Lord knows, it's not like you can just pull it up on your phone. I know. What is that? See, Porter is kind of along this weird ridge, like it's in a hollow or valley. And on the other side of the ridge is where the cell towers are. And with all this dense forest, forget about it. Really, the only place that has Wi-Fi is the Hearst. <laughs> it's this prep school. Oh, we're aware of Amherst. It does have a bit of a reputation. There's dial-up on the computer at the library. What's dial-up? But the librarian is out of town, so it's closed for now. The library is closed because the librarian is out of town? Well, Ethel's the only one with the keys. Yeah, that's on brand. Okay, we seem to be all packed up here. So, here's a map if you should decide to stay. <laughs> and feel free to call me whenever you like. I don't sleep much. Are you really willing to give us this camper van? The camper van? You'd be doing me a favor. Save me from having to pay the junk, man. All right, we'll have a team meeting and figure out our plans. At the very least, go grab a meal at the homestead. I guarantee you won't regret it. Maybe we will. Thank you again, Jane. We'll be in touch. Oh, this is happening. It was so wonderful meeting all of you. Yes, thank you, Jane. See you most of all, Scarecrow. Oh, hey, you're the best. No, you are. Oh, you are. <laughs> oh, Miss Loretta's gonna love you. Who? Miss Loretta at the homestead. She's Debbie's mom. They run the place. Get her talking, and who knows what will fall out of her mouth. <laughs> well, that's if y'all decide to stay, that is. <laughs> okay. Oh, almost forgot. We're gonna need to grab that mic from you. Oh, shoot! That's right. Wouldn't want to have to make you come back for it. <laughs> On the outside, the homestead looks like a simple farmhouse. But the inside is pretty intense. You are surrounded by dark stained wood paneling and yellowed plastered walls, low exposed beam ceilings and dim lighting. Pastoral frame paintings hang alongside a massive collection of taxidermy animal heads whose eyes seem to follow you as you pass by. And Jane was not wrong. It was the best meal we've ever had. I have never been so full in my life. I can't even sit up straight. I had him button my jeans like 20 minutes ago. Oh, me too. Oof. So, anyone feel like doing a five-hour drive now? Oh, God, no. Well, 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 Chuckles. That's a big turnaround. It's called Food Coma, and they had bottomless blueberry cobbler every bottomless. And that turkey, they just kept bringing out trays of it. damn mashed potatoes. So, we agree, we stay one night and check out the camper van tomorrow morning. Avery? In. RJ? I'm in. Chuck? I'm in. As long as we head out early, I want to get home before dark. Okay, Grandpa. (laughs) Hey, I'm just saying, even with this food coma fast approaching, I have a bad feeling about getting a good night's sleep here. Oh, why? Seems quaint. And quiet. And creepy. And haunted. Don't start. So haunted. Oh, screw you both. But yes! <laughs> and that deer head has been staring at me for like this entire meal. <laughs> Guys, don't be ridiculous. End of file labeled 002, rough cut, episode 2, tell me a story, the true life of Jacob Stanley. The views and opinions expressed in this podcast are solely those of the podcasters and participants. If anyone has information on those missing or the identity of the person or persons who uploaded these files, please use the contact information provided. Anything submitted may be used in future episodes.
Tell Me a Story, The True Life of Jacob Stanley is a bi-weekly podcast produced by Sylvia Whitaker. Please rate, review and subscribe. If you have information on the missing, know the identity of the person or persons who uploaded these files, have a theory about the case, or have had your own unexplainable experiences in Iphigenia County, Pennsylvania. We want to hear from you. Please record a message via our website. Messages may be used in future episodes. Voices will be altered and names redacted to protect your anonymity. Episode 3 will be released Wednesday, December 15th.